What's up, people? My name is Trent Steele, aka Father Dill. For those of you that don't know me, I am a photographer and videographer. I also shoot film and digital. And today I want to talk about the Pentax 67 lens, the 105 millimeter. So we're going to jump into it. This is a 54 millimeter lens equivalent on a 35 millimeter sensor. It is a 2.4 f-stop. It's crazy for buka, good for medium format. It's with it being that close to a 50 millimeter, you're kind of going to see equivalent with the IC. With that being said, with it being somewhat of a high focal length, it's also good for portraits and headshots. Um, not ideal for headshots, but because this is a medium format camera, this is great for headshots. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and jump right into it. This is behind the scenes with me shooting this lens on the Pentax 67 using Fujifilm Pro 400 film. Um, I'm going to show the pictures at the end of the video. But in the meantime, we're going to go over some of the equipment that I use and kind of like the thought process behind the whole thing. So it's kind of a true behind the scenes. So I really hope you guys enjoy it. All right. So I got my Pentax 67. You know, I got the 105 millimeter lens on it. I got my wooden handle for it. And I'm using the Fujifilm Pro 400H. And yeah, let's get started. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the light with a Sekonic light meter. This lets me know what to set the camera at as far as the aperture and shutter speed. Because this is film, I don't want to waste any shots. Notice I'm moving this light more to the left of her. This is considered the field light to fill in the dark spaces that the main light cannot get. Now right now I'm taking out the light dome off of my brightest light which is the aperture 300D. I'm taking that off and now I'm putting on a fresh amount and what that does is it keeps the light at a certain angle so what I did was I had this all the way open at 42 and you can see the little circular ring right here this little apple box right here that I'm sitting on but that thing is like $65 it's just a wooden box but you can do a lot with it it can be a prop you can set your models on it you can set other stuff on it whatever you need now also notice that i'm using my tripod for this whole shoot it's just so much easier to do it that way now that i'm getting more into it with my portraits Alright, so right here I'm changing up my C-stand. I wanted the light completely above her or overhead. And you see this little sandbag up there at the top? It wasn't worth a dime. That thing was like light as a feather. So I had him hold his foot on it to keep her from falling over. Last thing I need is this to fall over on my model's head. We ain't, we ain't trying to go through all that. Now what I did here was I took off the eye level viewfinder and I just used what the top of the Pentax has, which is absolutely nothing. But that is amazing right there. I thought that was hard as hell. Alright, so like I mentioned, I had a C stand, I had the Aperture 300D, the 120D, these are what we call continuous lights, not strobe lights. Strobe lights are considered more of a flash, but continuous lights, you can kind of see your result right there. I also use a tripod for this specific 
camera because with it being filmed and it's 400 ISO or speed, that means that it's not really ideal for low light. So to compensate for that, to get the aperture that I wanted, which was normally between 2.8 and 5.6, I had to lower my shutter speed down to like 60 which was kind of frequently what it was. So in order for me to get a very good picture without it being handshake from the shutter, because the Pentax 6.7 has a very hard shutter, I didn't want to risk it. So I just put on a tripod. Tripods are amazing. If you don't have one, I suggest you get one. We also had a Frenchel mount. A Frenchel mount, or have you saw it, call it Freshno. We also had a Freshno mount. And what a Freshno mount does is it takes the light and it changes the angle of it and kind of makes it more intense. So I had this at a wide length, which was at 42 degrees. So of course, 42 degrees is wider than 12. You go from maybe that to that. So it makes it a little bit more focused or more spot on. So I used that because I wanted more of a brighter look without necessarily just taking the dome or the French freshener off of it because I wanted that spot on look and this helped me achieve that. So a fresh amount is a really good thing to have for creative or different style portraits. Definitely something to look into. They're not that expensive. I wanna say I paid maybe, I don't know, 40, 60 bucks. I don't know, got it years ago. Either way, I'll link it below and y'all can see. Another thing that I had with me during the shoot that doesn't really count as equipment but was also a big help was an assistant or a friend or just somebody there to help me you know go through things and that person actually was somebody who helped picked out the outfits from here and there you know it gave me the freedom to focus on the photography the angles the lighting all of that versus having to think of okay i want this outfit this outfit let's put this together that together i have more freedom to just do what i want so i know that's not equipment but that's still something to have or something that you should consider having with you because it, it takes a lot of load off of you. Just something to think about. Originally, this was supposed to be like a, just a straight up shoot where one outfit, tank top jeans, because I wanted to practice with this lens to see how it looks basically. Cause I'm getting ready to do a photo exhibit and majority of these pictures for the photo exhibit are gonna be taken with this lens. So I wanted more of a portrait lens for this instead of the 90 millimeter. And honestly, I don't know why I like this lens better, but I like this lens better. And I know it's just 15 more millimeters, but to me, it makes a really big difference in this. Um, the closeness that you can get with this lens isn't as high or as close as you can with the 90 millimeter. I don't really care about that. I'm getting also comfortable with cropping, but the higher the focal length, the less I have of that, if that makes sense. Probably not making sense. However, yes, I, I like the 105. It's definitely a nice lens. Um, got it used. I don't buy anything new anymore. I mean, that's a very beautiful lens. I got it for a really good deal from KEH, shout out to them. So the 90 millimeter lens for this Pentax 7 is a 46 millimeter lens. So yeah, it's, would you rather have at 50 or under 50? I mean, literally it's not gonna be at 50 cause you're either gonna have a 54 with a 105 or a 46 with a 90 millimeter. Me personally, I'd rather have a little bit over. The higher I can get to 85, the better. I'm looking at getting a 135 for the Pentax 7 Not really sure. Me and the guy were kind of going back and forth about how much, how much I want to pay for it. He will not budge, but we'll see. Um, great lens. I'm completely satisfied with it. The pictures came out very, very nice. I really enjoyed it. This will be my main lens on my Pentax 6.7 from now on. It's a little bit heavier than the 90 millimeter. I don't care. It's already a heavy camera, so I'm used to it. It's, it's whatever. But I would highly recommend this lens for portraits and headshots. So if you're thinking about getting it, be sure to get it. I really appreciate you guys watching. Happy New Year's if y'all made it this far. I know this is my first video of the year. I'm late to it, but I got a lot going on. I gotta take care of myself. So I will see you guys next time. I'm out.